Okay, so I reconnected in time, and um, that brings us back uh, once again to our next segment here. I, I told you that we had a very special guest uh, coming up, and uh, he's been uh, on the show twice before, and let me tell you who he is if you don't already know. Um, Mr. Larry Nichols, my next guest, is a walking history lesson on everything Bill Clinton. His story is not only fascinating, to say the least, uh, but his story is also very timely. Who would have ever thought that, uh, that history uh, would, would be basically bring us to this point where the people that he's been so closely connected with and fighting against, um, uh, he started out with them as a marketing director of the Arkansas Development Finance Authority. He's also been a former associate of none, none other than himself, Mr. William Jefferson Clinton, former president. And uh, he says, I first met Bill Clinton in the mid late teen, uh, late 1970s, he was an up and coming politician. Uh, there were a group of us: Jim, Guy Tucker, Bill Clinton, Sheffield Nelson, and Mr. Larry Nichols himself. And he says uh, we kind of ran around and palled around with each other. It was from that point that I did a lot of projects for uh, former President Bill Clinton uh, from a marketing perspective. In 1988, I went to Bill and I said, "Quote: I need a job to kind of relax." mellow out. Bill Clinton and Betsy Wright suggested uh, that I go to work for a place called the Arkansas Development Finance Authority, and they said that my talents could really be used there. It was the best kept secret, ladies and gentlemen. In Arkansas, our best kept secret here on the Pete Santilli Show is that we have remained, despite even our differences in political views with, uh, with the Clinton camp, um, but we, we have wanted to, to discuss with Larry Nichols what his involvement was with the Clinton family. Uh, we have obviously here on the Pete Santilli Show opposed uh, Hillary Clinton's qualifications to be president of the United States. The Hillary Clinton campaign 2016 is about to kick off here if it hasn't already started. But Larry Nichols uh, has a lot of insight as to the inner dealings and the workings of the Clinton family. The Clinton, but what I'm calling the Clinton crime family. He may not say it in those same words. But uh, welcome back to the Pete Santilli Show, Mr. Nichols. Are you there? Yeah, Pete. Tom Hillary. Welcome back. All right. Well, I'm glad to be here. You know, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, believe it or not, each time you've made an appearance here, uh, our listenership has grown incrementally. So I wanted to make sure that I, I properly introduced you. Uh, and if, uh, if you don't mind, let me just tell people uh, what your involvement was in documenting the... The, the, the things that have been done that you had access to uh, in something called the Clinton Chronicles. Uh, you were best known for publishing uh, that series to expose uh, the inner dealings, we'll, we'll call it that. But now, now we have, uh, a, 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 I guess, some insight as to some child trafficking uh, that has been done by or connected to the Clinton uh, political machine. Uh, we have uh, also the sexual escapades of former President Bill Clinton uh, they go much further than just that one incident with Monica Lewinsky. We know that Hillary Clinton herself spent almost 30 years covering up the sexual deviance and crim criminal activity of Bill Clinton. Uh, covering it up, right. I would say, in opposition to women's rights. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. I did it. I mean, I guess I hate to admit it, but I beat up women, beat up husbands, you know, to get my point across. You know what? And you totally broke up just now. Do you mind repeating that last statement? Because I, I totally lost you, and okay. it's technic technically at my side the problem. I have actually beat up women and beat up husbands to protect the Clintons. Wow. You've never said that to me before, have you? No. No, you haven't. So This is I, one of those things that you've got to know. Not only have I killed people for Put me in jail. Now you you have never uh, you've jail. never paid uh, paid a penalty per se because you've already been protected uh, because that's what the Clintons yep. do is protect people like yourself. Uh, they send people like yep. you out there to do their dirty work, don't they? Yep. But now let's call a spade a spade. May I? Oh yes, please do. I've been all over the world, <laughs> all over the world, killing people for this country. Some deservedly, some not. 
didn't matter to me. Just what I was paid to do. Yes, sir. Now, this this is dating back how far, um, Mr. And Nichols? By the way, Pete, mm -hmm. so have you. And so have I what? So have you. You've killed people in the name of this country. Yes. I have killed... I have killed people in the name of this country. <laughs> I and, and and very proudly uh, and patriotically, uh, thinking that I, you know, that we were fighting for our freedom, um, and uh, we were doing well, the right thing no as a former United States Marine, right? You're no different than I am. Did you think when you Ronald were? Reagan did you think that Nicaragua? When Ronald Reagan sent me to El Salvador, I did it for God and country. Just like you would have done if it have called you. Well, let me let me ask you something. At the time when you participated uh, on behalf of the Clintons, did you believe that you were you were doing something patriotically and for the uh, for the common good? I didn't. Can I say the truth? Yeah, please do. Yes, always. I didn't give a shit. Mm. I didn't give a shit. Mm. I mean, hey, some of these people like Wayne Demon. Uh, needed to be dealt with. So I went to the jail, cut his nuts off, put them in a jar, put formaldehyde in them, and left it there. And, and Mr. Nick, Mr. Nichols, let me ask you something. I'm sorry. Larry, call me Larry, please. Larry, let me, let me ask you something. When when you were connected to these people, was was it just a, a time in your life when when you saw this as an opportunity to 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 remain connected to powerful people and and move your way on up the uh, the chain of command? I mean, what 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 motivated you at a time that that time in your life to 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 do just their money. dirty work? Just money, just money, just money. You needed the money, and that was your job at the time, and you were just a victim of the circumstances. Yep. Hey, yeah. one minute I'm doing something for our government, the next minute I'm doing something for Clinton. What difference was it? Pete, what was the difference? Yeah, that's right. What Tell was me. the difference? Yeah. And, and how, did they, how did they present these tasks to you uh, that you were performing? Did they, how did they motivate you to I do these F2. things? I was F2. Hmm? I was F2 whenever I got an F2 call. That man go in and kill. State police are not trained to kill in that day. All right? This is the late 70s, early 80s, they're not, they're, there, were, there were no SWAT teams, all right? There weren't. Mm. So there were I got an F2 call that meant go in and kill a guy. I didn't mm. give a shit. And, and who were, if you, you don't mind four, me describing, 5, 000, what difference does it make? It didn't even matter who they were. You were just given the task. You were told this is the person we need to take out. Did they tell you, look, it just do, for, do it for patriotism, for the... For the common good, or were you just given the task and you just responded to it by doing what you were asked? Well, when it came to Reagan, as Michael Reagan put in his book, Making Waves, I'm the most honest person he's ever met. Mm. And his dad spoke highly of him. When it came from the president, it was for God and country. When it came from Clinton, hell, I didn't give a damn. I'd just go kill somebody. Cut their nuts off. And you knew they were going to pay their bills. Uh, and you knew you were going to bring, pay. you were going to get paid pay. for your work. Wow. Yeah. Let me, or um, they pissed me off. Did you say something pissed you off? I'm sorry. I said, or they pissed me off and they didn't want to piss me off. Wow. Wow. You, now you've obviously, um, kept a lot of things, um, you know, to yourself for many, many years. Wow. Uh, in the beginning you were, you were afraid of them, weren't you? They were coming after you. They turned on you at, at a certain point. You had to defend yourself, didn't you? I had, I had to because I didn't have any support group. The media wasn't going to cover it. So if I died, they'd just pour alcohol over me and say I was drunk, crashed on the side of the road. That's right. T telling the truth uh, was easy for them to um, was easy for them to to cover up because they could easily demonize you, and that's been done before. Now yeah, we've well, had. You remember this, mm -hmm. Pete? Remember this. I'm in that son of a bitch's memoirs, so there's something deep, or he wouldn't have put me there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, what has uh, I'm going to ask you this before we go to the break here in about 20 seconds? What what has kept you alive yourself, even despite 
um, how, how they normally take out their adversaries. What's kept you alive, do you think? I'm a Green Beret. I'm trained. I'm trained to go into countries where the whole country chases me. I mean, I'm skilled, you know that, mm -hmm. in staying alive. And we've got one rule. Kill them back first. Kill or be killed, right? So they want to send people. Yeah, they send people at me. I'll just kill them back first. I don't ask questions. I deal with it. You know that. Yes, sir. Mr. Nichols, stay stay right there. We're going to take a break and come back. Uh, I want to get into uh, some current events here, of course. Continue the conversation about Hillary Clinton's candidacy, of course, and also talk about something that's been recently in the news. Jennifer Flowers, who would have ever thought she'd come back? She's important. You'll find out why when we meet back with Larry Nichols after this break.